So now moving on, um, we can actually do down sampling. Remember what we did was up sampling, right? Making the smaller one matches um, the larger one, right? And now we can also do what is called the down sampling, as I told you earlier on. That is making um, making the the the. I mean the larger one match the smaller one all right so as i said if we say we have we have one and then we have zero here all right so um one will be probably having something like that and then um zero will probably um probably be having something like this all right probably will be having something so down sampling is to make it come down all the way to match this all right all the way to match this so that they will have the same level that's what we are going to do. All right, we're going to down sample it, right? So just like um, down sampling it, right? I mean, this one will not do anything, but we will reduce this one, right? Down sample this one. Okay, so that's what we are going to also do over here using what is called the down sample. So in this case, what we are going to do is actually do the same thing as we did above, right? If you see the up sample above, it's the same thing. Um, fraud up samples in that in down sample we are just going to do um, not fraud down sample all right so it's just a variable name but it's just the same thing that we're going to do so instead of up sample we are going to do down sample all right then the resample um, function will come the same thing here all right so now instead of using instead of using the instead of using the fraud which we up sampled now we're going to use not fraud all right so that we down sample that and then we want the length to match this, the fraud one, right? So we're just in the interchange of this. So we're going to uh, we're going to down sample, right? We're going to down sample the not fraud and then make the length match the the the, the fraud one. All right. So it's just the same thing, the random state and everything. Then after that, we can cut everything together, just like we're doing here, right? Just the same thing. Right, but just interchanging um, the fraud and not fraud, right? That's the only thing that is changing, and then the variable name, right? That's the only thing that is changing over here. Then after that, after doing that, we can also um, check and see. Now we can see that we're having 360 of uh, of the ones, right? We're having 360. Let me zoom in a bit. Okay. Now we're having 360 of the ones. Okay. We're having 360 of the ones. Now the zeros that we're having too many of them, like around 217 point um, something, something like that. I think so. All right. We're having something like that. I cannot screw um, because of my pen. You get my screen freeze. Okay. So we have just, just let's assume that it was something like that, 217 or 213, something like that. Above. Okay. Now instead of this, now we've been able to down sample eight, right? Taking sample out of this and then uh, making the number reduced to 360. All right, all right. Because um, our one, right? This is this is zero. Zero was equal to this, but one was equal to this. All right, one was equal to this. Now this one has been reduced to 360. All right, and then this one, this one is still maintaining the same thing, so that they will all be of the same size. So that's down sampling for you. All right. So it's just the same thing. We're just going to use. Um, we're just going to use um, 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 this. We're just going to store this down sample the dot class just like we did over here. The same process. We are going to repeat again, right? We did. We did up sample the dot class. Now we're going to do down sample the dot class, right? And then down sample the dot drop the class. Okay. So whatever is in the class, we store it in the white train. Then after dropping the class, whatever is left we store everything in what is called the x train over here all right and then we use the logistic again and then we do um we do we do fit here on the x train and then the y train just like we did over here the same thing the same thing we did over here uh, going up we can see the same thing that we did over here nothing changes again and then after that we did some predictions on up sampled dot predict now we're going to do down sampled or under sampled dot predict right remember i told you up um, down sampled and up, um, uh, I mean over sampled. I mean down sampled and um, and that sampled are the same. All right, so that's why you see under I just use a variable name under sampled. Right, so down sampled and under sampled are just the same thing. Okay, and then after that we make some predictions and store it in uh, under sampled print. Okay, then after that uh, if we check the predictions that we are making, obviously we're going to see more zeros than ones. But don't forget there's a break in here, so 
there might be some ones in here. Obviously, there there are there are some ones in there, right? But uh, since there's a brick here, we cannot actually see everything. Okay. Now we can check the score and see how well it is doing. So now, uh, after doing down sample, we are having ninety seven percent right now. Let's check the percentage of the up sample. What did we get? We got ninety eight percent. Okay. So for up sample, we got um I mean a better accuracy. So maybe we will go with up sample, right? And then uh, if we check the if we check this um, the classification report again the classification report again uh, let's now consider the F score I mean it's just the weighted average of precision and recall so we can even if we consider you can see that at 99 percent we were able to identify zero as zero at um, 12 percent we were able to only 12 percent we were able to identify one as one if you consider you compare it with this one we can see that 14 percent right as compared to as compared to 12 percent over here okay so up sample doing the up sample is doing better than um the down sample okay now if we print the confusion matrix over here you can see the mistakes that we are doing right so um at at um we were able to predict 69 69,369 of uh, of zeros as zeros right and then a uh, thousand seven hundred and thousand seven hundred and one of the ones uh, of the zeros as one right so this is this part is actually uh, a wrong a wrong prediction all right this part is actually a wrong prediction okay Let me bring my pen all right this this part is actually a wrong prediction so um we're able to predict um six sixty nine thousand right sixty nine thousand of the zeros as zeros and then thousand seven hundred and one as 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 of the zeros as one all right and then over here we're able to also predict uh, 114 of the ones as ones okay and uh, instead of predicting the ones uh, 18 of the ones as ones wrongly we predicted that as 18 i mean as zero all right so this part is wrong right and as i said this is the part that we want to minimize all right so if we have algorithm that this one is very less that's the algorithm we choose but this one when we did the down sample this one has actually increased to 18 as compared to um earlier on that we're getting uh over here all right this one was 17 all right but now we are getting now we are getting 18 all right so we we'll, we we'll probably go with the up sample method all right so we we'll go with the up sample method um if if we come together at the end and that is doing better than the others okay now we can also generate some th um, synthetic samples all right synthetic samples are just um some 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 samples that we can just generate using the method called smote all right that is um synthetic minority over sampling technique all right so um if you're not familiar with this i mean you can easily see this one from the documentary i'm assuming that you are a bit familiar with this but if you are not um you can just see it at the documentary it's not anything i mean synthetic synthetic minority of a sampling technique is a popular algorithm to create synthetic um observations from the minority um class so in the minority class we're going to just generate some synthetic i mean fake fake that's what basically that's what it's actually going to do just create some fake um data points from the minority class just like we're doing for the down i mean up sampling that we up sampled the smaller one to match the bigger one right so we just but in this case we're going to um generate some some synthetic right they are not original but they're actually closer to the original right and that's what what is going to actually happen using this formula okay so it's not anything that you should worry yourself about it's just generating some um some fake data points i mean uh, which are closer to not not as fake as in fake but um i mean closer to closer to the data points that are in minority class all right and then it can actually match the um match the majority class right so if we can see over here we are getting something that is i mean called oversampling right from uh, um in Berlin, all right we import this mode right so if you if you can think about it we over i mean above there we're doing oversampling right so it's more closer to oversampling where we um we 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 generate some some values from the smaller data point to match the higher points i mean the 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 class with the higher um, length of the data points all right so that's the same thing that is going to do here with exception of the fact that it's going to generate some synthetic data points okay or some fake data points which are closer to the original all right so that's what it's going to actually do here so the same thing that we did earlier on when we started right um for everything in the class we store it in uh, in y and then uh, we drop the class and whatever is left whatever is left we store it in x 
okay whatever is left we store it next then after that we do the drain test split we use the drain test split function to split this x and y into x drain right in this case i'm going to name it as drain one and then x drain uh, s test one because simply because we've already done s drain and then s test so that it will not actually override the names that we've already done all right so the same way for s I um, mean Y train. I'm going to need just name it as Y train one, and then Y test one. Remember, all these are names that you can choose, right? So over here, instead of maybe um, X train, I could have just named it as maybe MM something like that. Some it, all these are just names that uh, variable names that you just give by yourself, right? So not no fast worry about that one. And then over here, um, setting the test size to um, zero point two five. That is twenty five percent for testing and seventy five percent for um for training all right then setting the random state to 27 to get the same random variables over and over again all right so over here this is where the smooth right we use the smooth function here uh, it's going to do this randomly so just like we did over here i'm going to do the same thing and then after that i store um some of the random um the the, the what is uh, 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 what it's going to do i mean it's going to just um fit some port on the x train one that we created over here and then the s i um, mean uh the y train one that we did over here and then store the outcome in what is called the s train one and then the y train one so this becomes our new s train one and then the y train one all right after performing this mode remember we initialize it and stored it in what's called the sm all right so after using the sm dot fit underscore some port on this we store the outcome here all right so this is when the uh, um, the synthetic data is going to be generated out of that, and then we store it over here. Okay. Then after that, we can also perform the logistic regression again, just like we did earlier on. And then um, instead of using the X train and the Y train, now I'm going to use um, the synthetic data that we created. All right. I'm going to use that one, which is the X train one, and then the Y train one. Right. So the same thing that we did earlier on. This no code is going to change here, with the exception that we're going to use um, X train one and then the Y train one. Right, and then I'm going to use the smooth. Right, remember I store it in a variable called smooth just to identify that in this case I'm performing smooth. Um, I'm, I'm building a smooth uh, model here. All right, so I'm going to use that one to make some predictions, and then after that, I store the predictions in smooth underscore print. All right, and then check the accuracy on that. All right, so it's the same process, just changing variable names and then using different, um, using different functions. Okay, then when we do that, we see that we have 89% or you can call it 90%. All right, and um, I, I think um, the previous ones were doing better, I mean, without generating some, using this mode function, um, the previous one, even this one was doing, um, this one was doing 97% and then um, the app sampling was doing 98%, all right? So they were doing better than this, right? So at the end, we will see, using the AUC curve, we see that. So let's check the confusion matrix. Now you can see, instead of minimizing this, I told you, this is the one that we want to minimize, right? The fraud cases, that way we are predicting to not be fraud. That's what we actually want to reduce. But this one is actually um, making a big mistake here. This the huge mistake that it's doing. If the cases are normal and it's saying that they are fraud, at least it will not cause the company that much. But if the cases are fraud and it's saying that they are not fraud, then it's actually going to cause the, the, the company much. That's why we want to reduce this. But in this case, it's actually making a huge mistake of classifying those fraud cases as not fraud. All right, so we will not go with this. I mean, at the end, uh, we will not go with this. All right, we can also use the random forest classifier. All right, um, to perform this to create a model on. I mean, as in previously we, we use we use um, what is called the the logistic regression with different different um, different methods. All right, so we are going to also try the random forest. We're going to try the random forest. I mean, in the same way, I mean, the same code. Nothing changes over here. Nothing changes over here. Just different function that we use, no different algorithm names that we're using here, and then storing it in a different variable name here. Okay, so nothing changes here if you compare it with the other, fitting it on the string Y train. Remember now I'm going to fit it on the original one, not the X train one or the Y train one. Okay. White X train one and the Y train one was just for smooth, all right. In this case I'm going to build different algorithm that's the random forest class fire. I'm going to fit it on the X train and then the Y train. Okay. Then after doing that, I do the prediction just like I did for all the other ones. And then after that, I check the accuracy. Now, if we check the accuracy here, 97, just like 
uh, we did for uh, random random I mean uh, logistic regression earlier on right we got 97 percent so this one is also performing the same it's almost the same level all right so if we check um, if we put the confusion mattress on that 18 right we have 18 mistakes over here all right um, which which is almost almost the same thing as um, this one is doing all right almost the same thing as this one is doing okay so um, it's not actually making any improvement. So we can also use what is called the naive base, right? The naive base and the naive base, you're going to use the Gaussian so that we get the normal distribution forward, uh, I mean, in, in that form. And then um, we, I mean, we, we do that one on X train and Y train, just like we did for logistic regression over here. All right, so after that, we, we can make some predictions on that. And then making predictions, we can check the accuracy score. All right, so just the same way. We see this one is actually doing better than that. Uh, the random forest. This one is doing ninety eight. All right, almost ninety nine. If we want to run, all right. Unlike this one, uh, which is doing ninety seven. All right, so this one is actually doing better. Let's go and see. Um, um, we can we can actually build a confusion mattress for this side. They not do it here, but you can just um, do it the same way. All right, the same thing here. Right, just just copy the same code here. You can copy the same code here and then run that. Okay, now um, we can we can also do this um, using the Grace CV. All right, so maybe I should write over here. Let me convert this thing to Markdown and then um, call it. I'm going to do this. So I'm going to call this one here. All right, so that you get to know what we're doing here. So here is um, Great Search CV. All right, so um, I'm, I'm, I'm believing that you're a bit familiar with Great Search CV. If you don't know about that, this is also a way that you can tune the hyperparameters, all right, and then um, check to see how well it's actually performing on the algorithm. Okay. I mean, no, on the data set, okay? So um, we're going to use that one. We're going to use that one, and then um, we're going to use support vector. We're going to use support vector in this case, all right? If you are not familiar with um, um, Gray Search, um, please just, just check it on the documentation. I mean, I mean, it just, just takes two minutes or 30 minutes to read uh, about Gray Search, right? And then uh, there are several hyperparameters that you can tune for uh, Gray Search, right? For any model that you want to use. All right, so in this case, we're going to use support vector. Or so maybe I should just add that one so that I get to see it over here. So we're going to use support vector um, classifier. All right, we're going to use this. Okay, so maybe I should make it a bit small. Let me add one more here. It's better. Okay. So now um, these are just hyperparameters that I'm setting over here. The C and then the gamma are uh, most important. That's I mean most important parameters that you can actually set, right? And uh, as I said, if you're not familiar with it, just take two minutes to read this thing about this research CV on the um, documentation. All right. And then um, after that, I just put all these 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 um, hyperparameters that I'm, I'm I'm doing over here. I just put them over here. All right, I just put them over here. Okay, now if I run that and then I I get this model, then I use it, I mean, I get this variable, uh, and then I use it to fit on the X train and the Y train, then I get this model, right? This becomes my model, okay? This becomes my model. So as I said, it's having a lot of hyperparameters that you can consider. So you just take two minutes or three minutes to read about the documentation and then get yourself familiar with it, right? So if you go just, um, search in your search bar for ingress CV documentation you can easily get it all right and then after that I can use it to make some predictions and then after that I'll check the accuracy now it's doing 94 percent right quite quite low as compared to the previous ones right with the exception of um, with the exception of the down sample one that we did and we built logistic regression we're getting 89 right with the exception of that it's doing low as compared to the other two, right? You can also use what is called the randomized search CV, all right? So um, it's just it's just the same. It just um, do the same thing as this one is doing, just that it's generate. I mean, it's do it does that randomly, all right? It does that randomly, um, unlike the gray search CV. So just take um, two minutes to read about these two, right? Just um, gray search CV and then the randomized search CV. 
Okay, you can do that. And then um, after that, what we're going to do is actually um, create the AUC curve, right? So that we can see um, how well these algorithms are doing, right? So apart from the confusion matrix and the um, classification report, you can use the um, we can use the AUC. Actually, in this data set, um, it's, it's not appropriate to use the confusion matrix only or uh, to judge on this. If you use the AUC curve, you give you get a better insight into that, all right? So that's what you're going to do over here. So I, I'm going to set um, the number of rows to be two, the number of um, columns to be four, all right? And I'm um, setting the figure size to be 2015. So if you see over here, all right, let me go all the way down and show you what we're going to actually do, all right? So I'm saying that the rows should be four, one, two, three, four, and then the columns should be two. I mean, the rows actually should be true. I mean two and then the columns the columns should be four one two three four columns and then um, two rows okay that's what I'm setting over here and the size uh, that's what I'm setting over here all right that's what I'm setting over here and then the size the figure size should be 2015 if you remember what we did for the um, the pie chart is just the same thing over here okay so this one is just setting the size all right 20 all right just setting 20 here 20 down and then I mean I mean the length and then the width to be um, 15 all right that's what we are doing over here. that's what we are doing over here okay then over here um, what we're doing is um the same way we pick the algorithm remember at first we did um, dummy we did dummy classifier algorithm so I'm going to pick that dummy and then mixed make prediction because I'm going to use and then store the predictions in what's called the dummy print, right? So I'm going to use the same thing. I mean, I'm just picking um, all the way to up here, if you see uh, where we did the dummy. So, okay. So I'm going to pick the same thing here, right? Dummy underscore print equals dummy dot predict. Okay. So the, that prediction that I did is what I'm going to use, right? So the same thing that I'm using over here. All right. And then this FPR DM and the TPR DM uh, is what uh, I'm just storing the false positive ratio and then the DM is just um, the dummy and I'm just sorting dummy to um, DM and then uh, these are just variable names that I'm choosing all right these are all just variable names that I'm choosing because the ROC curve here is going to give us um, false positive ratio and then the true positive ratio all right and then the threshold I mean we have threshold here and then I just added DM all right to show that I'm dealing with dummy all right so all these are just variable names that I'm choosing just like S train Y train S test Y test I mean just like what we're dealing over there so you can choose any any variable names to represent that all right and then uh, matrix in matrix we have something called the ROC curve so I'm going to import that and then I will do that on the Y test and then the dummy Print right, dummy print is just the prediction that we did on the dummy model, right? And then we store everything in dummy underscore print. So I'm going to use that one and then the Y test, right? And then the ROC curve, all right? Then when I do that, when I do that, right? Then over here, I'm going to use the AOC, right? And matrix.aoc, I'm going to put this FPRDM. That's why I wanted to pick this so that I can actually use it over here. Okay, but I can actually use it over here. Over here is just um, plotting it, right? So zero zero here is just the position, just the position zero zero. So the first here will give you zero 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 one zero two zero three, and then you come here as um as zero um, zero one. I mean one zero one 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 two, and then um one three. All right. So these are just the position that you can actually set, right? So and that's what. Um, this part is actually doing all right and then I'll put my I'll put my FPR I mean FPR DM and TPR DM and then set the label um, to two significant figures and, and then um, I also search I also put this one which is the uh, AUC that I created over here all right and the AUC that I created over here I just I just put them here I just put it here right so all these are things that um, manually i'm doing over there right so that's why i see auc um dot nine two uh, auc cost zero point nine uh, five zero right only to two decimal places all right and that's what um that part is actually um uh, i'm doing okay so all the way up you can see it over here that i want only to two significant figures all right so um the rest is just just i mean this is just to plot it all right and you see dash dash there all right dash dash there so if you if you come there you can see over here that we have we actually have some dash dash there all right we have the dash dash over there all right and then um 
if we go again yeah if you go again this is just setting the title and then the font size all right so dummy if you come down the way down you can see the title there as dummy all right you can see the title there as dummy and then i'll set the uh, set the y label as true positive rate all right the font size to be 20 so if you go down here you can see true positive rate and i mean just 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 like that and then um if you go down if you go here there's a y label to be um i mean the x label to be false positive rate so if you go to the x you can see false positive rates down there and then um what else is left you can see um we can see the legend right to be at the lower lower right and then um pop pop size equals 16 so you can see it over here all right the size equals um 16 we just set it up there and then now uh, should be at the lower right all right so that's what is happening over there all right so the same thing we do, we are going to duplicate so we just you can just copy the same thing here and then paste it here all right with the exception that uh you paste it over here you paste it over here okay with the exception that we are going to change this right this one is also supposed to come from the logistic right um under under we after we did the out uh, under sample we made some predictions using, using the logistics so we're going to change this one and then uh, maybe the name so you see that over here i'm doing log right just instead of um doing um doing doing this um dm right instead of doing dm i'm just naming this so all these are just names that i give um personally so you can change all these names to see to i mean any name that you want to keep all right so the same thing the same thing just just setting the size and then setting the position so zero zero and then if you come here you just change zero zero to zero one so that it will go to the next to the next um to the next space so zero 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 one zero zero two and then uh we have zero three over there all right, so the same thing for all of them, right? You just copy and paste the same thing for all of them, all right? And then keep on changing. Um, you just go back and then keep on changing this, all right? You keep on changing that, you keep on changing that, all right? So for Gaussian, this is the for Gaussian, all right? We store it in what is called GNB underscore um, best, right? If you go up here and verify um, where we started with Gaussian, okay. You see that we have Gaussian here. So after building the algorithm, we start in what's called GNB underscore best. And then we use that one to make predictions. So the same thing here, this is what we are copying and then we are putting it here. All right, this is what we are copying and then we are putting it here, okay? So the same thing you would do for the others, right? And this, this, is, this is just the same thing. Maybe you just change the title from logistics to say Gaussian and then from say Gaussian to random forest then from random forest to say grace cv something like that all right so this last part is just plotting all of them together right plotting um dummy plotting logistic plotting smooth plotting um gaussian plotting random forest plotting grace cv and then um i mean setting the title right setting the title true for um true positive and false positive and lower right i mean it's just the same thing just plotting all of them at once all right just plotting all of them at once so that's what you see over here all right just putting everything together here so that we can copy so now let's take a look at this one now what uh, area under the curve or the auc is actually saying it that the the larger the area under the curve the better the algorithm right so you can see um for the first one there's no area there because uh we're able to predict all of them i mean um all the all the zeros as zeros and then ignore the ones all right so that's why um this one is getting um you are just having this straight line it's actually perform i mean giving you 50 percent here which is very bad i mean bad okay and then this one i mean this one is giving you um 0 0.92 now you can see this area here right area under this curve right area under this curve now this curve i mean this uh, we are having smooth here but i mean it could it could be a rough curve right it could be a rough curve now area under this curve right the bigger or the larger the area under this curve the better the the algorithm so if you if you compare even you compare this logistic with this smooth you can see that uh we have a bigger area here rather than i mean as compared to this smooth that is having lesser and then this one is even a little bigger but not as big as that and then um this one is almost uh, almost competing with this um um, uh, um this this one random first is almost competing remember it was um 92 right it's doing 92 and then 92 
and then this one 86 right 86 here now um if we check this for grisa cv um license to two right not as much and then if we compare all of them we can see that one of them is actually um standing out right one of them is actually standing out um probably is two of them which are overlapping each other right so the dummy and then i mean i mean the logistic and then um the random forest right in the random forest and then the logistic is actually overlapping each other so the other ones that are uh, doing better so we will pick the two of them and then use it um, for this particular um, problem all right so in this problem we choose this we choose logistic and random forest algorithm as the best ones all right and that's not all we can go back and then hyper tune the parameters again and then see which one will actually perform better than the other and then choose that particular algorithm okay alternatively i also gave you an alternative where you can actually start by scaling the amount and then the time before building this algorithm and also um, check the sg boost right check the sg boost and then um instead of maybe logistic and then um random forest you can drop the rest you can drop the rest of the algorithm and then use the logistic and random forest and then together with the sg boost and then see which one is performing better so i've i've, I've done um almost almost everything here for you just you just open these ones all right and then um you just open these ones and then go through and uh, um keep on changing it and adding this hg boost and building the same algorithm again and see how well it is it is going to do all right if it's not performing better you can drop that or you can hyper tune it and then make it perform better than we have already done all right so uh, we will end this one here and then meet in the next project all right so um, have a nice day. See you in the next project.